Hello, people, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be making a a newer uh, video. Um, you know, all the honor and glory uh, goes to my Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not doing it for me. I'm not doing it for nobody else. But I think if if uh, we have the time to uh, you know get on YouTube and on Facebook, um, I think we can at least try to post some videos that have some some positive outlook on life uh not just you know watching negative videos you know or hearing to negative songs on the radio you know because then you'll have those thoughts in your head throughout the day and i've asked the lord to help me make it the best way he wants me to make it um, I am nobody but a pound of sand, a pound of ashes. Because when I die, that's what my body will, will become, a pound of sand and a pile of dirt. So... I'm nobody. I will never be nobody here on this earth. I only try to follow my Lord Jesus Christ as the best way as I know and the best way I can. And uh, I hope you learned something from uh, this video. And I hope that Excuse me one second. I hope that um that you uh learn something new that you might have not known or it's not because you know I know it all or I seem, or I, or if it might seem that I may know it all, which I don't, because I learn new stuff every day, whether it be at work, whether it be about my Lord Jesus Christ. I, you know, me personally, I don't think we'll will ever know everything there is to know about Jesus Christ here on earth. That's why we're gonna spend an eternity with Him, because it's gonna take that long just so we can know Him in heaven. You know. Uh, so saying that, you know, the topic that I want to talk today about is the about how to talk to somebody about the who might not want to believe about the Trinity. So first we're going to start out by going to the book of John. So if you were to open your Bible, see I got my Bible. I'm not reading it off, you know, a piece of paper or anything like that. I'm just reading the the information that was told to me. I wrote it down in a piece of paper. But then when I wrote it down on a piece of paper, then I look for the information here on this book, on, on the Bible. And the book we're going to go to is the book of John. Is the gospel of John. So let's go to John 1. And we're going to start on verse 1. Okay, so John 1 uh, verse 1 says. This is talking about the Trinity. It says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
and this verse is in the it's somewhere else in the Bible and uh, you have to go back to Genesis and it's uh, verse 1 in Genesis 2 it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth verse 2 says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters okay so verse 2 is talking about the spirit of God was moving on the water it wasn't God himself and it wasn't Jesus Christ himself it was the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Because it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're all God and they're equal rights. And in verse 2 it says that, And the earth was without form, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, earth, of the water. So that's the Spirit of God. But if you go back to John 1.1, 1, 1, Let's go back to John 1 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay. Uh, you know, going to church and reading the Bible, the best way, you know, some people are like, you know, you don't read the Bible, you study the Bible. Okay. What I've been, you know, attending church and studying in church and what I've been you know studying in the word of God you know on my own and you know and with other help from other pastors and and you know in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God John 1 1 the word is Jesus Christ. And the Greek word is. Uh, logos. The word. And it says that. And the word was with God. God the father. And the word was God. So here we have. In John 1.1 1, 1, we got. God the father and Jesus Christ. But then in Genesis 1, 1, 1 and verse 2, we got the Spirit of God. So right there are the three. In Genesis and in John 1, 1. And it, does, and, and, and it, it can't get any more clear than that. But there's a couple verses that do make it a little bit more clear. So the next verse we're going to go to is uh, in the same chapter 1, verse 14. And it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? So the Word was Jesus Christ. And it says that it that it became flesh, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So Jesus Christ had to leave heaven to come to earth to rescue all of us. That's the reason He came to. Die on the cross for all of us. So he can save us. All of us. And when Jesus came into existence here on earth. Was not the first time that he came in existence. Because what we see in verse John 1. 1 it says. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Saying that Jesus Christ has been here since the beginning. He doesn't. He, he doesn't have a beginning and he doesn't have an end. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. 
the alpha and, and omega is the first and last letter in the Greek alphabet. Alpha and omega. He's the first and the last. He's, he, he's been here from the beginning. He's going to be here for all eternity. Jesus Christ. God the Father. God the Holy Spirit. But he, he came in a baby. And then grew up here on earth. And everything that he did in, on earth. His, uh, his ministry. Er everything was already uh, prophesied. The way it was going to happen. And the way he was going to die. Was prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years. Before uh, he came into existence here on this earth. He left one realm. The, which is heaven. To come to this realm, which is earth, you know, I think it's so cool that you can't even wrap your mind around that. How can a person leave one realm being a God in that realm? You know, sometimes we don't wrap our minds around it that he was a God in heaven. Um, in heaven, he was a God. He had a bunch of angels around him. He had his father there that he used to commune with his father, God our father. Or how many of you out there have a son that don't speak to that son? You know, or what son has a father that the son doesn't speak to the father? We all do it. So for a very, very, very long time before this earth was even created, God and the son already talked. With each other, you know, and uh, so he left that place to come here and rescue us on this earth, and we needed to be rescued because if he wouldn't have came, uh, the Israel people would have had to keep on sacrificing the animals to cover their sins. But what about us? You know what? Would we be able to do as you know Gentiles, people of the nations, you know, not the chosen nation of Israel, but just Gentiles, you know what? Because those traditions were only taught by the people of Israel, so we're not Israelites, you know. So Jesus Christ had a plan of salvation for all of us. Before he even created this earth. But it wasn't really him. It was his father had a plan of salvation. For all of us. The father loves us so much. That he gave his only son for us. You know. He didn't send. A. A make believe. Son you know. Or. Or a son that he made out of. You know. Dirt. Or plastic or whatever, you know, like something that's artificial, you know. It was his only begotten son. His only son. To come and die for all of us and take the sins of the world upon his shoulder. That's how much the father loves us, you know. I can never wrap my head around that, ever. Reading those words leaves me at a state of, like, I can't ever imagine that, ever in my life, ever. No matter how hard I try, you know, so I just leave it at that, that I know he loves me. I know he loves me because he sent his only son to die for me. And uh, the next verse we're going to go to is um, verse 14. I mean, chapter 14, verse 1. Verse 1. And it says, uh, excuse me, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe 